Good afternoon, everyone. We're looking forward now to Christmas. Of course, we still have the first Sunday of, uh, I'm sorry, the fourth Sunday of Advent coming. But right after that, Christmas. Jesus Nativity coming into this world. Uh, we always look upon his crucifixion as his great act, and it was, of redemption. But in a certain sense, taking on the divinity, taking on humanity, he became flesh. It's, a certain, in a certain sense, a redemptive act in its very self. Because he comes down into our world to take on helplessness. And to be like us, to be with us, to be the word that is love from Almighty God. We go now to our uh, first reading in this cha in this chapter. Let's see if I can. There we go. Uh, it's Advent, uh, fourth Sunday in Advent. The first reading is from uh, Second Book of Samuel, chapter seven, verse one to five, and then eight B to twelve, and then. 14a, next, 16. King David had come to a stable time in his life, when he was victorious over his many enemies, and quite well-to-do. He naturally thought that it was time for him to do something for God, who had done so much for him. It is so human to think of God as being on our level. God is the source of all good. Whatever anyone has that is good came, comes, and will come from God. No one can give God anything that is good that God himself has not already had eternally. God turns the tables on David. David, who has already received so much from God, will receive even more. God promises David a house or a dynasty that will be composed of one heir who will rule eternally. The Lord God said to David, through the prophet Nathan. I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your very loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne stand firm forever. In our third reading, Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 34. This gospel is traditionally referred to in, in the rosary as the Annunciation. The angel or messenger of God announced to Mary, Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever. This fulfills the prophecy found in the first reading. Also, Mary is celebrated for her submission or obedience to God's will. In our third reading, uh, Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 16, verses 25 to 27. Paul concludes this epistle with a doxology or hymn of praise. To him, at the, very, the first two words, and then, at the end, be glory forever and ever. Amen. The long section between those words calls upon God to strengthen the Roman Christians to be obedient to God, which is obedience, which obedience is their faith lived out in their lives. <laughs> 